Hi, it's the Lipstick Gal. Thanks so much for watching today. I'm talking about rose toned eyeshadows and I didn't realize until recently how many of them I had. So we're ranking them today. For so many years, I didn't want to wear pink eyeshadow. Like you couldn't pay me, I wasn't gonna do it. I'm a neutrals kind of gal. And oddly enough, I'm wearing more of a neutral eye look today because I've been wearing nothing but rose toned eyeshadows. I feel like for the last, like, I don't know, maybe first half of the year. And so I'm giving myself permission to wear something else today. Um, but it feels weird to be talking about rose toned eyeshadows and not to be wearing any. The other thing I'm gonna tell you is we're kind of stretching it just a little bit because not all of these palettes are just pink or rose toned. They have those colors in there with some other as well but they definitely have a rosy pinky vibe the other thing you're going to notice with rare exception there's not going to be a bright pink i'm not that type of person um, they're more kind of muted mauves things like that all right so there's 18 of them here i always lose track as i'm doing a countdown like this i will pop up the number here for you and at number 18 is one of the maybe the newest rose toned eyeshadow i have I've tried it a couple of times and I think it's the formula because I think the colors are pretty. It's this. It's the Fenty Snap Shadow in number four. All right, this is what she looks like. And for me, I have a problem with this shadow right here. This one is, uh, it feels rather dry and it is very shiny, very metallic-y. But the problem that I have with this is that not only do I get a lot of fallout underneath the eye um, and it's hard to place, but the more I start kind of blending it do you see how it goes like really shiny and something happens like the more i blend and press with my finger like the color actually changes and all i see now is kind of like a rusty red color almost terracotta and it looks very different from what it started out as and maybe i shouldn't be pressing that hard but i usually apply shades like this with my finger and it starts out looking like this and the more i try and blend it the more it looks like this. The other thing is there is this bright kind of raspberry shade in here that I am not gonna wear. It's just not me. Maybe I should try it to say that I've tried it, but I've used this multiple times and I've never used that shade. So I would say for the formulation um, and for the shades, this is my least favorite at number 18. It also doesn't inspire me to try any more Fenty eyeshadows. As I was going through my drawers, I completely forgot about this. And then I opened it up, it's like, yeah, it kind of is really rosy. Kind of has a rosy corner. It's from Violet Voss. This is the HG or the Holy Grail eyeshadow palette. I've had this for forever and I used to use it all the time. But if you look at it, these are the shades over here that I hardly ever use and I lived more in this half because they were neutral. But now that I'm opening it up and I'm looking at all of this over here going like, uh, yes, please. So I feel like seeing it makes me want to use it and to use a side of the palette that I never really had used before these guys down here, especially this cranberry splash. This looks so pretty. Oh, Yes, but it has kind of like a, a copper, almost pinky vibe to it. I really like the way that these shadows look, but you see how rosy this can get, how like intense kind of cranberry it can get. I think this is amazing. And I've never really used this corner down here because I just wasn't into these shades. But when I saw it and I was like, yeah, and I love the formula. So I think this is down at number 17, not because it's bad or because I don't like it, because I forgot about it, <laughs> but now it's time to pull it out. Number 16 is one that I've had in my collection for a long time and has been well loved because I can tell it has little dips in the pan. And it's this, this is the e.l.f. Bite Size Eyeshadow in Rose Water. Um, and the ones that have the dips are this one here and this one here, because I am forever sticking my finger in these. Oh, they're so, I mean, look at that. They're so pretty. I tend not to use this guy here on the end. I tend to use like, these three <laughs> and I and I think it's because this really reminds me of the sort of formula that I don't really love from ColourPop or Too Faced which is like a matte with metallic sparkle in it um, I do use it just hardly ever or I'll like shove it into my lash line as liner or very lightly on the outside corner for a little bit of depth but the majority of the time I'm using these lighter three shades here this is well used very loved and is such a great product at $3 at the drugstore. So if you have not tried these, 
This one is beautiful. Number 15 is one that I haven't had that long. And I think the reason it's not like higher up in this is because I have to really want to wear it. <laughs> and and it, it needs extra tools, extra patience, and extra time to look amazing. And when I do, it looks amazing. But this is not a, I've got five minutes and I gotta get out the door kind of eyeshadow palette. And it's this. This is the two moods from Give Me Glow. So every time I open this up, I'm absolutely blown away by the metallics in here. So the reason this is ranked where it is, I think it, it I, I have really mixed feelings about it. Cause I mean, look at these. Aren't these just delicious? I'm like, <laughs> they look so good. I love them. I love the way the mattes look when they're blended, but every single shadow in here gives me extreme fallout. I have to do my eyes first. I usually, you know, do my face first and then start working in on my eyeshadows. And the problem I have is that I don't want sparkle or darkness below my eye from a dark matte, you know, kind of crumbling below. I have tried several different, and maybe I'm just going in like a crazy animal, like really heavy, um, instead of light-handed picking up. And every time I pick up these shadows and start trying to place them and blend them on the eye, I get a ton of fallout down here. Now, I can tell that they're softly pressed. They're, I mean, gorgeous and beautiful. And these are the reasons I bought this palette. And these are the reasons I want to use this palette but these guys need eyeshadow primer and you might not have heard this but i try and avoid eyeshadow primer because i just don't have the time for it but when i want a specific look i'm willing to do it but this is the sort of palette despite how lovely and amazing it is it takes me more time i have to change up my routine and how i apply my makeup eyes first then face and if i get halfway through it i'm like oh i wanted to use that but i've already done my face no i won't use it today so the ranking for this it's there because it needs to have its hand held. Or I need to not be an animal when I'm like scouring in there, you know, and applying stuff and I end up with stuff everywhere. But I mean, look how magical it is. Especially this shade, this pinky shade, these two here. Oh, love, 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 love. Delicious, but number 15. This next eyeshadow palette is listed kind of like a nude. <laughs> it's in the name. And I was like, yes, but it has a very definite rosy lean to it. And I think this might have been the first time I've had this for a while. I've had this for two years and I think it's this eyeshadow palette that I started seeing that kind of rosy lean to it and then I realized oh I like this oh I want more of this What's this this is the born this way natural nudes palette from Too Faced okay so I like that this packaging isn't that clunky metallic packaging it's like super slim you know very streamlined I like that it, it looks like a grown-up palette not like a little kid's palette Okay, sometimes I like it too. I like the metallic packaging with the peaches and the puppies and all of that, but sometimes I just want a little more elegant. And I feel that's what this is. So look at this. It's this section right in through here. Even this one here, this kind of richer brown shade does lean a little pinky nude. This duo right here, this one and this one are very much copper, but I feel like the rest of them really do have that kind of rosy lean to them. And I realized a long time ago that if I'm wearing a nude lipstick, I like a pink leaning nude as opposed to a peach leaning nude. And then when I was looking at this, I was like, look, same thing, pink leaning nudes for the eyes. And then I was like, I really, really like this. I use this palette nonstop in 2020. So beautiful. I need to pull it out some more, but I'll tell you, this is the one that kind of, like I heard the penny drop. Like, yes, I do like pink eyeshadow. And then it kind of became a trend. And so after it became a trend, the one, the next one that I saw come out, I think about the same time, I don't know if it was 2019 or 2020, was this guy. This is the Paris Edit from Viseart. So not only is the packaging telling you what sort of colors you're getting in here, but when you open it up, I like that it's small, little teeny tiny pans because with all the eyeshadow I have, how am I ever gonna get through it all? But you definitely have more of these like mauve tones right here. You have, you know, this straight up pink, and then you do have some of these more neutral shades in the middle. So if you're looking for something that's a little bit softer, or you wanna add those nudes in with the mauve pink tones, you get them here, but this is a decidedly rose toned eyeshadow. Here's where I tell you, I really have fallen head over heels for Viseart and their formula. I feel like this one is where it's at because I don't reach for it. And it's, and I don't know, cause I'm looking at this and I'm like, oh yes. I definitely would, and maybe I just need to 
put it in my next month's makeup bin so I'm forced to use it and I'll fall in love with it. But out of all of the other rose tone shadows from this brand, this one's down where it is. Just out of not using it. <laughs> and that's me because I have so much. But I really do love this formula and I think this is a beautiful palette. All right, this one also needs some hand holding. <laughs> and I do it because it's absolutely stunning when it is. And it's one of the Pat McGrath quads. This is the Venus in Floor quad. Oh, beautiful. And for me, it really is this shade here, but you see all the sparkle all over the black packaging? It comes from this shade. And if you're looking at it in the mirror, you see it has a duochrome shift because it's kind of pinky peachy here and very gold here. It has a really neat shift to it. This shade here is pretty, um, and it has some nice depth to it, but it's not too pink. It leans a little bit more brown. But this one, this is the reason right here that I love this. So this is the sort of quad that also needs hand holding um, to get this shade to stay and not be like sparkle all over the face. I need the Pat McGrath Artistry pen. I need to be really careful with placement. Sometimes I have to do my face first. I don't have to, but I'm less likely to end up with rogue pieces of sparkle on my face if I do it that way. So this is another one like the Give Me Glow. It needs a little more hand holding, not as much as the Give Me Glow, but I always love the looks that I get when I wear this and I always get compliments. This is a beautiful palette. All right, this next one tends to be a little bit more kind of cool leaning and it's from Viseart. This is the Midsummer palette. This is one that I picked up last spring and I fell in love with. But you can see this is a little bit more pinky toned. This duochrome here, I, I'm sure I'm gonna run out of this because every time I open this up, I scrub my finger in there. But I love how soft and neutral these are. And you can get a really beautiful, delicate look from this, or you can really pack on some of these darker shades and get something a little bit more intense. But this is one that I use quite a bit. I don't know why I use this one more than this one, but, and maybe it's because there's fewer shades. I don't know. Or maybe it's because this duochrome shade here just makes me so happy. This is a favorite. I've used it so much and continue to reach for it. This next palette is one that I picked up during a sale and I have been enjoying it, but I also feel like it's not exactly what I expected. It's the Huda Beauty Rose Quartz. The minute I heard the term rose quartz, I was expecting more pink shades. And yes, you are getting some rose tones, but you're getting really strong like purples and blues. And I know it doesn't really look like it, but if you start dipping your fingers in here, you see how cool these lean? They almost have a blue reflect to them. And I was not expecting that. I was expecting more rose tones, more mauves. That's what I think of. But the truth is, this pink here is a little too bubblegum. Not quite Barbie, but bubblegum for me. And um, I have spent more time on this half the palette, like these nine shades here, because they tend to be a little bit more neutral, even though they're cool. And I'll use some of these more metallic ones here, like this one, the one in the middle here, for kind of like highlight. But it's not what I expected. Do I love it? Yes, but I was expecting more pink. Um, and especially with the name like Rose Quartz and the outside it looks so pink, but you do see it has that reflective, you know, blue and everything else. I think it's beautiful, but I was kind of surprised I wasn't getting more. I almost didn't put this next palette in the lineup because it's only like one third rosy tones, but the rest of the shades in here complement them so well. And I almost always reach for the rose tones when I come into this. This is the Sydney Grace Be Mine palette. I have the light variation of this, but it's this center row right here. These guys love so much. I even like pulling in this guy here, but I feel like everything in here works so well. But when I think of this, it's like a neutral palette with a lot of rose tones. One of my favorite things about this palette here these metallics are so gorgeous and so beautiful. They are the easiest, like most reflective, beautiful, low maintenance shadows. I don't need eyeshadow primer. I don't have to be careful when I blend. They, they, they're perfect, like they stay all day. They don't flake, they don't fall. I love. So I know, you know, we've got some not rosy tones here and some not rosy tones here. So that's why I almost didn't put this one in, but every time I come in um, to these shades here, they're just absolutely stunning. 
you know, they're so pretty with metallics. I love this one. I need to be using it more, but I almost always reach for the rose tones when I open this guy up. This next palette I've had for years, forever and ever, amen. And I still love it and I still reach for it. And the formula is still beautiful. It's this, you can tell it's old because they don't make this packaging anymore. This is the Natasha Denona 05, meaning that there are five shades in here. <laughs> so this is what it looks like. And this was the one that when I first got it, I thought I would use it a lot and I didn't really start using it until the last couple of years. And I love it so much. These shades are absolutely astounding. I mean, miraculous, look at that. They're just so delicious. Look how amazing these are. These are just the best. I feel like this formula is different than what I'm getting in some of the other Natasha Denona palettes that I have. I have the Metropolis palette. I also have the Zendo palette. And I feel like those formulations are different than these guys. And I kind of miss this. This is very buttery, very smooth. Um, and I know she's developed, you know, like chroma toppers and kind of like the ones that feel kind of like they're um, creams that dry down to a powder. She's got a lot of different formulations. This is the one that I like the most. It's a straight up, you know, pigmented metallic with shine and it stays and it's beautiful and it blends and it's like butter. Love it. I adore this. And since I've been kind of like in a pink eyeshadow and I know it's not pink, they're very rose toned but I've been reaching for this a lot. I got it so many years ago, I'm glad I still have it in my collection and I'm gonna hang on to this with like my cold dead hands until I can't anymore. This next palette is one that when I heard that they were launching this color in this formula, I was like, set an alarm on your phone. You will not miss this, you absolutely have to have it. And I really enjoy wearing it. It's from M Cosmetics, it's the Divine Skies in Venetian Rose. This is, this is everything my heart wants because there's only six shades in here. Um, I know exactly which one I'm getting every time I pull it out because I have three of these palettes. They're all shaped the same. They have packaging is the same except for the exterior color of the packaging is different. I love that this one's pink. I know what I'm getting. I like that there is a brown shade in here for my transition. I really heavily lean on that. And then I love the rest of these shades. They are so pretty. The roses in here are just gorgeous. Look at how pretty these are. And the metallics are glorious. I just feel like this formula is super easy. I like it because, again, it's one of those that I don't need a eyeshadow primer for, blends easily. I can do a whole look with just my fingers. It, it won't be as precise as if I'm using brushes, but I've done a whole look with this eyeshadow palette with just fingers because I was traveling and I forgot brushes and I was like, I'm still wearing eyeshadow today and I did it. I love this palette. This is so easy. So if you're looking for an easy rose toned shadow, you might love this because you've got, you know, something light, something dark. It doesn't get too dark. If you know a little more depth, this might not be for you, but I love this formula. I love how compact it is. I love everything about it. A fave. You know what's funny is that I realized that rankings can be different based on my day, how I'm feeling, <laughs> what I'm dealing with emotionally, but this next palette has been a huge favorite of mine. I love it so much and I reached for it. I, I realize now that I reached for it more in the fall and the winter time, but I'm like, why limit it? I want to start wearing more of this. It's the Wayne Goss Tourmaline palette. So you have more kind of like cranberry shades here and more plum tones, but it does give a very beautiful rosy look. So when you have all of these guys swatched out, you can get a very rose leaning eyeshadow look. I love these because the textures don't accentuate any of the crepiness I have on my lid. These look beautiful on my older eyelids. They last all day. They don't need a primer. I love this, but I gotta pull it out again. Mm. Beautiful. This next eyeshadow palette is one that I picked up this year and I when I've tried it It's like why didn't I get this sooner and it makes me kind of want to get the sibling palette to this one And it's from flower beauty. This is the desert lights. Oh my goodness Okay, so you can see these are all kind of you know pinky and plummy toned but the metallics on these Are on another level and this is affordable. This is drugstore. This is Remarkable. I mean like look at this like this guy here, especially 
this one, they're just so gorgeous. So there are times that I'll take like a one shadow and just kind of like, and that's it. And there are other times I'll take a couple. Sometimes I'll use this as a companion to some more mattes. This is ridiculous, the amount of color, pigment, shimmer you're getting out of here for the price. Now I want the jungle lights. And I'm like, I probably won't use all the shades in the jungle lights, but would it be worth it for the three or four that I would use? trying to tell myself no. Don't be surprised if you end up seeing it here, but this has been probably one of my most favorite purchases of 2022. I've used it so much. It's just miraculous. So here are all the swatches. Um, I don't like doing swatches on my thumbs, even though I have done it in the past, but I mean, like, look at these guys. Oh, absolutely stunning. If you don't have it and you're curious, it's totally worth it. This next palette has been a favorite since it first landed in my collection. It's another one from Wayne Goss. This is the one called Pearl. I love it. This pink right here is so gorgeous. It's so soft. It's so like almost not there. But my favorite thing about this is the way that this all plays together. But I wear these guys together so frequently. And that's like these two shades and this one. I like that this tends to have just a little bit of pink to it, not too much. And then you've got something that's very decidedly cool. I like that this is a palette that leans a little bit cooler. I do feel like this palette is probably best for people with light to medium skin tones. I feel like there's maybe not enough depth here and maybe some of these shades right here may not look perfect on people with richer skin tones. But for me, it's one of my favorite most used. And it's the sort of palette that if I need a quick look, but I want it to look elegant and I want it to be elevated and fast, I do this. I love this palette, it's one of my favorites. So this one's kind of new to my collection, but I have been using it nonstop since it came. And I know I haven't really around it that long. So maybe on a different day, this would be ranked differently in this eyeshadow stack. But this Petaphor in Frambois, I love. It's pink, but it's not too pink. It has shimmer, but not too much. So you're getting two shimmers and two mattes, and it's the easiest. I have been wearing this so much for work. I'm sure people think all I wear is pink eyeshadow at work. I love this. I love that it's a quad. I like that it's tiny. I like that everything about this. The formula is great, but I feel like I can get a really soft, but not too pink look. The older I get, the more I like a quad like this, where, you know, my darkest shade is like this, but it's not too dark. I feel like sometimes um, if I use something that's too dramatic out here, it just really starts to show like uh, some of the creping that I have going along out here, some of my smile lines. And I like that this kind of keeps it really soft and kind of right in the middle of tone. This is not too deep. This is not too light. These metallics are a beautiful formula for my textured lids. This has been a favorite, and I I didn't originally get this when it debuted in the fall of 2020 because I was like, I don't wear pink eyeshadow. That's not for me. And then when I picked it up this spring during their sale, I was like, what, what was I waiting for? And I probably should have just gotten it. <laughs> I have been enjoying this so much. It's an absolute favorite. All right, this next one, I don't know that it qualifies as a rose toned eyeshadow, but it has those really pretty kind of mauvey tones and I can't stop reaching for it. It's another Viseart. This is the Cashmere palette. So it has a lot of neutrals in here. I love me some good neutrals like this side here and this side over here where it has more of these like mauvey tones. I guess that's why I put it in here because you can get a real decidedly rose toned look. Maybe it's a little bit more mauve berry leaning, but I always get such a fabulous eye. And the minute I start mixing in some of these, you know, like warmer metallics like this, it really brings this palette to life. There are times that I'll stick to just these six shades and sometimes I'll just use these six shades. But when I start mixing and matching across, I get the most gorgeous look, effortless. Lasts all day, no primer, blends like a dream, no fallout. I love these shades. And this is probably one of my most used palettes right now. I was wearing it yesterday, I was wearing it the night before. Um, I have it in my monthly makeup bin for this month, but this is fantastic. So this last palette is my favorite rose toned eyeshadow. I had to put it in a drawer because I was wearing nothing but this. <laughs> and I love that it has range, it has depth, it has texture. It, the formulas are beautiful, effortless, and every single time I wear it, I love the look that I get. And it's this. 
This is the Major Dimensions 2 from Patrick Ta. His first one was more kind of bronzy golden, and this one here has more of these rosy tones to it. So you're still getting, you know, some nice kind of warm coppery tones. You are getting some deeper tones, but it's these guys right here in the middle that are just absolutely astounding. I'm just gonna swatch all of the metallics for you. So here are the metallics. Um, this is the only one that I don't use that much. I think a lot of it is because it's a little dark for what I normally wear. And maybe I'll pull on this one more once we start hitting fall, winter. But since I picked this up in the springtime, I'm liking these lighter shades here or this one. Um, but the mattes in here, I don't want you to think that the only fantastic thing about this are the shimmers. The mattes are magnificent. They're buttery, they're soft. They blend with like no effort at all. I'm just like, what is this magic? And I think the best part that I didn't expect to like are these cream shades right underneath this little plastic window. I use this one every single time I open this palette up and I just started using this one and I love it. Um, you can use them all on their own. You can use them as kind of like an eyeshadow primer or base for everything else you put on top, but they blend effortlessly and they are amazing. So I like that we're getting creams, we're getting mattes, and we're getting super sparkly metallics. And it's not all just pink like these two right here. You're getting a real range. And I feel like that's what makes this so much fun. This is one of those eyeshadow palettes in my collection. I haven't had it that long. I've only had it for a handful of months, but I'll tell you now that if anything happened to this, let's say that, um, you know, like my daughter took it to school and lost it. <laughs> um, maybe I took it traveling and my entire, it got ruined. I would go out and get another one of these instantly. I wouldn't wait, I wouldn't hesitate, I'd go right out. I have used this so much just since I've had it in the last handful of months. It's glorious, it's beautiful. I wish I'd picked it up during the Sephora sale, but I, I didn't know. I didn't know how great this formula was gonna be. I'd heard kind of mixed reviews about the textures in the very first Major Dimensions palette, the one that's a little bit more warm toned. And so I was kind of waiting. And then I walked into a brick and mortar Sephora and I swatched this and I left with it. I wasn't going in to like make a purchase. I was gonna make like a return and I couldn't leave the building without this. It's really beautiful. This is my most used favorite eyeshadow rose tone palette at the moment. The one that like I literally had to put in a drawer cause I was like, I'm not using anything else. I gotta use the rest of what I have too. But I just defaulted to this. It's beautiful. I love it so much. If you have it, you know what I'm talking about. And if you're wondering, is it worth it? Yes, yes it is. Hey, thanks so much for watching today. I never thought I was gonna be a person to wear pink eyeshadow. And I think if you're looking at it, it's not like a straight up bubblegum Barbie pink. It's not a hot pink. They're kind of more muted, um, maybe mauve soft rose tones. That's really the way that I like to wear this sort of pink eyeshadow trend. But I would love to know what your favorite rose eyeshadow palette is, or if it's not a color story that you like to wear, tell me why. Thank you so, so much for watching. Have an incredible day, and I'll see you again soon.